All right. So for, in this video, I'm going to try. I'm going to solve the limit as x approaches negative three for x squared minus nine over x squared plus two x minus three. Now, what we know about limits is that oftentimes we can try as a starter direct substitution, which means we can put in negative three into our x values. and try and see if we can get our limit that way. So, if we try, try for this problem, we use direct substitution. So we end up with negative three minus nine all over negative three squared, negative three squared minus nine, negative three squared plus two times negative three minus three. Okay, let's bring this down here. When we expand this out and we reduce it all, we'll expand it first, so we end up with nine minus nine over negative three squared is nine, negative three times two is negative six, we have to subtract six minus three. When we reduce this down, we end up with zero over zero. Now, when we solve limits, we know that, first of all, with any problem, you can't divide by zero. That makes it an impossible and undefined number. So, there are limits in this problem, but from this setup and this in the way this expression is set up in this limit, we cannot solve for the limit as x approaches negative three, which could mean a multitude of things. It could mean there's an asymptote. It could mean that there's a hole in the graph and that value is, is either undefined or it's missing. So one strategy we use when solving limits is we try to then, algebra if, if direct substitution does not work, we get to algebraically try to rearrange the equation or expression in such a way that we can be we can actually have a solvable limit. So if we take now the limit as x approaches negative three, we have our original expression. Alright. So now what we can try to do is see if these equations expressions are factorable, in which we know they are. So we end up with the limit as x approaches negative three of x plus three times x minus three. And the bottom is also factorable. We get x plus three times x minus one. All right, so now from here, we can see that something starts to work out. We see that we have two x minus x plus threes on both sides of the, of the fraction, which we know will reduce down to one. So if we reduce this, we get the limit. As x approaches negative three of x minus three over x minus 1. And now is when we try, we can try direct substitution again, because now, as we see, it looks like it's going to work out. So, bring this down here. Rewrite it. The limit. x approaches negative 3 of x minus 3 over x minus 1. If we direct substitute with negative 3, we end up with negative three minus three over negative three minus one. So when we simplify this fraction, we know when you subtract numbers, you can actually just add the negative. Same thing here, add the negative. So we end up with 
negative 6 over negative 4, which further reduces down to 3 over 2. So from before, we saw that at exactly x equals negative 3, there is no limit. Does not exist. But when we reduce it down to a simpler form, such as this, we see that the, the limit as x approaches negative 3 actually does exist. So if we were to look at a graph of this equation, which I'm not going to show, but if we look at the graph, and you check out the table, especially on a graphing calculator, you would find that as your x values got closer and closer and closer to negative 3, at exactly negative 3, it would be undefined. But as we get closer to negative 3, we find that the values of y get closer and closer to 3 halves. And that's it. That's how you solve this limit at this at this value for this expression.